Another important feature of Ansible is the modules which come with Ansible are idempotent in nature. Now let's look at what this idempotence means. Now if you want to define idempotence, this is the definition of it, right? Idempotence is the property of certain operations in mathematics and computer science that can be applied multiple times without changing the result beyond the initial application. And it can be represented by this. Confused? That's exactly the expression I had when I read that property for the first time. Now let's simplify this a bit. Uh, let's take an example that you are like, you, your different friends are traveling to a common location. Let's say that's Goa. That's if you, For those of you who don't know uh, these places, these are all the places in India and Goa is a famous destination. It's a beach destination. So if you are considering your ne next vacation, you may want to go, travel there. Let's say, uh, you have one friend who's traveling from a place called as Mangalore and you take one route there, right? So you travel by road. Uh, whereas uh, there's another person who's traveling from a little further away uh, who might want to decide to take a, another route and uh, that involves a train journey. Uh, versus uh, there's a third friend who is actually traveling from Mumbai uh, who decides to take a flight. So that's a different route, right? Versus the fourth friend who is already in Goa who doesn't need to go anywhere, right? Now, uh, wh what are we talking about here is different people here take different route based on where they are currently at. And that's important. And that is sort of an example of item importance, right? So uh, your destination is same, but you take different routes based on the difference between the desired state or the destination and your current state or your current location, right? And how does it translate or how does it become relevant to Ansible is Ansible runs are invoked multiple times. You might want to run it multiple times. And every time uh, you run Ansible, it compares the desired state versus the current state. And based on that, it would decide whether to take an action. If there is a difference between the desired state and the current state, it decides to take some action. If both are same, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to skip over. That's important because that, that way you can run Ansible multiple different times. So if you run for the first time, uh, you may run all the tasks because none of that is in desired state. Second time, maybe few tasks have been changed, so you just run those many. On the third time, nothing has changed, so you don't run anything, you skip over everything, right? Now, this helps in managing the state effectively uh, using that declarative approach, right? Let's look at an example. In the previous session, I talked about the user management we where we wrote a sort of a declarative um, you know, uh, code to create a user. Now, the way Ansible manages it is, let's say our desired state is, we want to have a user whose name is XYZ, whose uh, UID is uh, 5001, whose password is AAA. That's our desired state. Now, how does the system achieve the desired state also depends on what is the current state on the system. For example, let's consider system A, where the user does not exist, in which case the An Ansible is going to decide to create the user using a command such as user add or add user. And that can change from system to system because it supports multiple systems typically, right? Um, so here we're creating a user. Let's take another example of a, you know another system where the user is present, but the UID is different. Now in this case, Ansible is not going to create a user. It is going to alter or modify the user by updating the UID, right? So it has to do a user mod or something similar that, like that, right? Let's take another example where we have an, a third system where the user is there, the UID is also present, uh, same, but the password is different here. Now, in this case, it's not going to create, it's not going to alter or modify. It's going to change the password using some command such as passwd, right? And let's take another example where the user is present with all the relevant properties, in which case it will not 
take any action and that's where idempotence importance is come uh, is you know comes into play right because your ansible module to create the user will have the right intelligence to decide what action to take based on the difference between the desired state and the current state on the system and it will pick the right action but it will decide whether to take an action or not in this case it's not going to take any action or in these cases it's going to take different actions based on the drift based on uh, what is the difference between the desired state and current state and that's what is idempotence importance in practice if you like this content do like share and subscribe you may also find links to our free courses in the description below along with some special offers for our premium courses you can also visit us at schoolofdevops.com